That's just taken delivery of. Oh, our new outboard. Now, before you all get carried away, it's made in China. Our new outboard. Ta -da! Still, a, still only a little motor. There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Oh look, it's got a propeller. It's got a book. Read the instructions. Oh, it's actually in English. How light that is. Right. Hey. The oil for two steps. Yeah. Starter motor. That's the back end. And that's the working end. Where's its arm? Up and over. Right. No oh. forward and reverse gear. Only a single cable. Is that an extension? No. Can have an extension in there. But twist throttle, dear, how good is the twist throttle compared to what we've been having? What do you have? The slidey uppy downy thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. I much prefer a twist throttle. Should we get you a set of Harley Davidson uh, hand grips for that? I just heated ones. I just um probably didn't wreck it then. Huh? So I was going hoo hoo hoo. That's right. Think I would pull it out like a telescopic thing. No. So we'll get a vacuum pole and we'll be right. Yes. Then you put the weight up front. Right. So there's our new outboard. Yep, see? Let's just honestly outboard. hope that that does not give us the same sort of grief as our uh, outboard that starts with a, um, yeah, Evil and I'm not gonna mother. show you, but gee whiz, ah. all I can say is that that outboard that we had has caused us no end of trouble in the last two years. Yeah. And I have spent so many euro on it and Surinese dollars. Everybody that touched it said we can fix that. Yeah, what a shocking motor mm -hmm. for producing. Read, reading and reading. Nowhere in the instructions, guys. Nowhere in the instructions does it say to put in gear oil. So I was sitting pondering about this and was thinking, this can't be right. They, they, it can't be shipped with gear oil in it because of the federal you know, transport rules and all that sort of stuff. So I took the prop off, took the split, split pin out, took the prop off, took the cover off, which just shimmied straight up, no big deal. She's dead empty. Now, in one of the reviews that I did read was a guy that was going on about these boaters being a heap of um, whatever the word is, and uh, it appears like he started the motor and ran it without putting any oil in. And of course, it all seized and cracked itself up in here. And he reckons that they're a piece of uh, whatever the word is, I can't think of it at the moment. But, so with a bit of deduction, I worked out that we needed it. The little toolkit that comes with it, absolutely perfect for doing this, there's only two bolts. So all good, so I'm just about to fill it with some gear oil, put it all back on. Um, when I get down to the boat, I'll put a grease, the grease nipple here for my steering. Uh, and that's about it. Get it ready to uh, start up. Start. I've been trying to master this flood epoxy and so the first time I've done it, it uh, worked really well. I'll show you the results. Right, so looking down, this is, where I've used the flood epoxy, look at the look at the reflections that I got in it. I ran masking tape around the sides to stop the resin from going over the sides. And in so doing, I've actually created a ledge there. Maybe you could see, yeah, there's one. We've tried using a sander and we've tried using a plane to try and eliminate that. So this time, uh, I'm trying to flood epoxy this. So this time I'm actually taping right up into the edge because I don't want any epoxy come down here. This bit of material um, goes over the top of our sink. Lou's already covered this side. Uh, so this becomes our chopping board. I'm gonna flood epoxy this. So, hardener, hardener. We've now drained all of our hardener in. And now all we do is stir for three minutes 
So I'll see you in three minutes time. Now for some strange reason on the instructions for this epoxy, it says to mix it for three minutes, which I've done, and then pour it into a new container. So I have no idea why they want me to pour it into a new container, but they say pour it into a new container, scraping all the edges, and I'm following, the which is unlike a male really, to follow the instructions, but I am following the instructions this time. So I've scraped it all in, and done all of that. So that can now be put to the side, and guess what it says now? Mix for another three minutes. Right, six minutes is a long time stirring. Just ask any dad jokes. Anyway, so I've stirred it and it said it should become clear, but it ain't clear, it's very opaque. So, uh, hmm. Now it says to apply in a zigzag fashion and then with a foam brush, even it out to the edges. So, here we go, in a zigzag fashion. Let's see what I've gone and done here. So, go out to the edges, so I suppose I'll go that way. Well, I could use the trick that Chippy told me about. Remember, in one of the other episodes, he told me about you come and land like an aircraft carrier and take off and then come back and do that side. That's what I'll do. So, I'll just saturate everything. If I've done it wrong, guys, please, please feel free to put the comments down below and tell me a better way of doing it. I'm just trying to follow the instructions, but the instructions weren't all that good on, on this part. This part's called the seal coat. It's not the flood coat. Um, and so this stuff is just to cover everything and get it to ready for my uh, flood coat. Now, this is what we use here to bust any air bubbles. So there's a little air bubble there, so we try and get rid of it by heating the air. See you in six hours. Okie dokies. It's not a, not a bad sort of a, a shine, I guess. Um, but that was only the seal coat. Now this is tacked off. So I'm just about to do the flood coat. In the next seven minutes, I'll be making up some more resin to do the flood coat. Beautiful miss. Beautiful miss, punch it. Okay. All right, oh team. Well, we've had Chippy check it over and uh, we're ready to go. So the instruction says, do not even this out. So we just pour. So we're now gonna do a zigzag pattern and let it self level. We shall see whether this self levels, eh? Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, Chippy. Fingers crossed. hanging over the three-quarter inch marine ply and we're going to trim that off using a router today. So that goes like that. The router bit has a bearing that will follow along the plywood and the cutter will then actually cut the veneer making the whole thing nice and smooth. So with that I'm going to clamp it down, plug it in and we'll start.
Okay, have a look at poor old Salacia, eh? Just have a look at her. Oh dear, oh dear. These are the cabin sole hatches, inspection hatches, water tank, fixing all that, main floor hatch with the bilges down the bottom, another water tank, another fuel tank. All this is all ripped apart. Poor old Salacia. Uh, more inspection ports up but I don't know whether I've covered this or not hopefully okay when we started to do this where there was a lot of water problems here and delamination so we've pulled out taken out the deck prism taken out the u-bolt fitting uh, Genoa track bolts uh, chain plate bolts inspected them all whilst I've had the opportunity and resealed them and with the windows that we had replaced in Turkey with Vedat I know a lot of you use Vedat, we used Vedat, he's a great little tradesman over there in Marmaris uh, we stopped all of the water leaks in here and in through there which is great but with the storms that we've been having and the and the storms that we've been having and the rainfall we got in French Guiana and Suriname we've discovered another leak around the mast so I don't know whether you can see it. I'll grab a light wait a tick right oh we've discovered another leak around the mast I don't know whether you can see that it's all sopping wet and uh, a little bit festery unfortunately Chippy and I came down to the boat uh, yesterday and we discovered that all this area down here at the around the base of the mast was all splashed with water from the rainfall so water was getting in there so it was time I had to tighten the rig which I've just finished doing now I'm going to uh, bog up the front of the rig because I've moved the mast back a bit with a mast chop as well so I'm going to uh, now put some Sikaflex in between the mast boot um, and maybe around the collar as well yeah I'll do around the collar as well because we suspect that the mast might have been leaning against the front edge of the collar which has lifted the back edge of the collar which has allowed water to run in so yet another trial and tribulation of being on a boat hey good stuff oh like a giant oh look at it that's a tree Oh look at the back, it's under there. So there it goes all the way down to there. Okay. Go and put the boat back in the position it was before. Yeah, okay. Okay, in case it takes off. You should care. 